আসসালামু আলাইকুম ডিয়ার পার্টিসিপেন্টস এন্ড রেসপেক্টিভ প্যানেলিস্ট স্পেশালি आवर টু ডে স্পিকার ডক্টর কবির জামান স্যার এন্ড অ্যাজ ইউজুয়াল आवर স্পেশাল প্যানেলিস্ট স্যার এম নজরুল ইসলাম স্যার জ্যোতি মেশিদ আহমেদ স্যার প্রফেসর সাইফুল ইসলাম এন্ড फ्रॉम মালয়েশিয়া ডক্টর সারু ইরঞ্জল রাজকোপাল অলসো আওয়ার চেয়ারপারসন ডক্টর আব্দুল ওয়াদি চৌধুরী টু ডে স্টপ ইজ ডিফারেন্ট উই फ्रॉम আ স্টুডেন্ট লাইফ উই নট হিয়ার দ্য টার্ম ইজ গ্রোন আপ congenital heart disease but which is now it is well accepted terminology lots of i think uh, guidelines also which in published in the esc why which i think 80 to 80% is now uh, congenital heart disease grown up in the adult life so it is different topic terminology which today's i think the right person to talk about the ethical subtility dr kobidun sir you welcome in ipdi thank you sir all the sub list comments Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone and today we are going to talk about grown up congenital heart disease which itself has become a subject in the sense that many of the congenital heart disease patients they are being treated quite nicely in their childhood but still some are not getting the proper treatment in childhood they are going and getting our older with the persistence of that defect again some are getting treated and post treatment there are certain changes in the heart they may be permanent or they may create certain other problems that also comes into under the uh, context of grown up congenital heart disease for that reason for a child the approach and for a grown up patient the approach there are certain differences and most of these approaches are dependent on the echocardiographic finding so obviously none other than professor kamil jamal who is here who is who has made his name the field of echocardiography is one of great excellence we are talking about this and we do hope they're going to learn as usually many more things from him and for the fellows young fellows i do think they are enjoying the session welcome you all professor kobijo sir you can start now So please unmute, sir. Origin, please unmute, go ahead. Please mute everybody except the speaker. So audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Professor Audible, for so many kind words. So respected teachers and chairpersons, moderator and the panelist and the distinguished audience. My topic is ventricular subtractive. I have conducted this lecture actually to. Uh, keeping in mind the fellows actually this lecture is for the novice how to identify the vsd how to diagnose the vsd actually i i, I will concentrate my talkings regarding the so Okay, so I'll talk on the ventricular septal defect. So I have constructed my lecture regarding the definition, incidence, prevalence, anatomy of the interventricular septum, classification and type of VSD, how to measure the size of the VSD, malalignment of the VSD, how to evaluate it, and mechanism of spontaneous closure of the VSD, pathophysiology, lethal feature, malalignment. But I will highlight the colorful one. I have taken the anatomy of the interventricular septum, interventricular septum, as because during my learning period, I faced that if one can understand the perfect and meticulous anatomy of the interventricular septum, then it is easy for him to identify the VSD and to classify the VSD and to type the VSD. 
So definition is the ventricular septal defect is a hole or multiple holes in the interventricular septum. And you can see the diagrammatic picture. This is the ventricular septum. This is the ventricular septum. This is the ventricular septal defect. And this is the patch closer of the ST. And it was first described in an entirety by Rosier in 1879. At that time, he did not know that the, uh, this murmur, this musical murmur comes from Rosier. And after his name, it is also known as the Melody de Rosier ventricular septal defect. So, VSD is the most common congenital anomaly and it may be an isolated defect or part of a complex malformation. But there are other literature that say that prolapse of the mitral valve is most common. Some literature says the bicuspid aortic valve is most common. So, these are the incidence or prevalence of the congenital heart disease. You see among the least. At the top is the ventricular septal defect. The list is among the more than one lakh patients. So incidence is one uh, two per one thousand live births, and male and females affected equally. But there is some variation. You can see here the VSDs are slightly more common in females, approximate to fifty six percent female and forty four percent male. So regarding the etiology, these are the congenital ischemia iatrogenic traumatic. Among this, congenital is the most common. Regarding ischemia, it is usually due to post-infarction, iatrogenic following cardiac surgery and pacing, traumatic, a direct blow to the chest is the most common mechanism. And so BSD may be isolated or primary, or BSD may be part of another cardiovascular anomaly such as complete atrioventricular septal defect, GORB, Truncus arteriosus and tricuspid atresia. Actually, BSD is obligatory for life saving for these complex congenital heart diseases. So, the types of BSD, what are the types? It depends on the location, size, pressure gradient, alignment of the different parts of the interventricular septum. Regarding the location, it may be perimembranous, outlet, inlet, trabecular. Size, it may be small, moderate, large. Pressure gradient, wise, it may be restrictive or unrestrictive. And there may be male alignment. I will discuss each and every component in different sections. So, first, I have told you that I, will recapitulate, I want to recapitulate the anatomy of the interventricular sector. I am keeping in mind the fellows. So, regarding the shape of the interventricular septum, it's a complex shape. So, need multiple cross-sectional eco-images for complete understanding of interventricular septum and the ventricular septal defect. So, you can see the parasternal fourth chamber view, sorry, apical fourth chamber view. It is a curvilinear structure. It is concave in the perspective of LB and convex in the perspective of RB. But there is alignment between the interventricular septum and the interventricular septum. If you see the short axis, it is convex from RB side, from a concave from LB side. And if you see from apex to RBOT, it is a curvilinear structure. And if you see the apical, uh, apical long axis view, you can see this is the from apex to LBOT. This is a curvilinear structure. And you can see the short axis at the great level view, great level, great vessel level. Then you can see this is the interventricular septum outlet part. This is the LBOT, this is the RBOT, this is the pulmonary valve, this is the tricuspid valve. So this is a complex shape. Now, morphologically, the interventricular septum is composed of membranous septum and the muscular septum. Again, this muscular septum. Membranous septum may have two parts, parts atrioventricularis and parts interventricularis. And muscular septum have three regions, inlet portion, trabecular portion, infundibular or outlet septum. I'll show the picture on the things. And this the, regarding the muscular septum, it is the radiating out from the membranous septum like the spokes of a grid is the muscular septum and typically divided into three regions. What are the three reasons? If you consider this diagrammatic picture, it is the RB wall is remote. 
this is the membranous part of the IVS. So this is the inlet part, trabecular part, outlet part. These are radiating from the membranous part. Actually, these three portions develop from three sources of the three sources. Actually, outlet septum developed from conal crest, trabecular septum from the primitive interventricular septum, and inlet septum from the inter, from the epicanal cushion. So all the develops and then unite at the membranous part. So what about the membranous part of the IVS? Actually, this is a relatively small structure, made are only five millimeter in diameter in adult, bounded superiorly by the outing bulb and inferiorly by the muscular septum. If you consider this picture, it is the morbid anatomy, diagrammatic. And you can see, this is the membranous part of the IVS. And this is the RCC, this is the NCC, this is the septal lifted of the septal lifted of the tricuspid bulb. This is the trigon. So the part of the interventricular septum that is in direct contract with the RCC NCC junction, septal lipid of the tricuspid bulb and trigon. That is the membranous part of the IVS and the IVS and these landmarks will make you sure that you are identifying the defect in the membranous part. It's important. And so yeah, I have talked to it earlier, the membranous part have two parts, parts atrioventricularis, parts intraventricularis. What are these? If you see this picture, this is the membranous part of IVS, and this is the aortic bulb, this is the septal lipid of the tricuspid bulb. So above, part above the septal lipid with the parts interventricularis, and sorry, parts atrioventricularis, and this is the parts interventricularis. So if you see the morbid anatomy, this is the membranous part of IVS that is in direct contact with the aortic bulb and septal lipid of the tricuspid bulb. And this is the membranous part that is in attached to the crux of the IVS, crux of the heart. So if you see from the subcostal view, it, it, this is the membranous part. This is the interventricular septum, and this is the aortic bulb cusp. And so the direct contact is the membranous part of IVS. And if you see the diagrammatic picture of the short axis view at the great level of the echo, the short axis view, this is the membranous part of the IVS because it is contiguous with the septal leaflet and the junction of the non corridory uh, RCC and NCC. And so in the real 2D images, short axis, great level, this is the tricuspid valve, septal leaflet, the pulmonary valve, this is the outlet septum, this is the LBOT. This is RBOT, this is the membranous part. And if you see the apical five chamber view, this part is the membranous part. It is contiguous with the septal lateral of the tri tricuspid bulb and the, and the cusp of the aortic bulb. So what are the inlet part of the IVS? Previously I have talked about the membranous part. Now I will talk about the inlet part of IVS. So if you can see the apical four chamber view, this is the part of the IVS that lies in between the atrioventricular part. That is, this is the inlet part of the inlet of the left ventricle. This is the inlet of the right ventricle. So the part of the IVS that separate the two inlet part of the ventricle, that is the inlet part of the IVS. And so this is the, what is the extent of the inlet part of the IVS? Actually, it is the apical end of the apical end of the anterior mitral leaflet. This is the extent of inlet part of the interventricular septum. It is just below the AV valve and up to the tip of the anterior mitral leaflet. And so this is another concept. This portion is known as the atrioventricular septum of the heart because this part develops from the endocardial cushion. It contains the in inlet part of the interventricular septum and the primum part of the interventricular septum. Now I will talk about the outlet part of IVS. So this is the diagrammatic picture of the echo, long axis and short axis. In long axis, the part that is contiguous with the aortic valve, that is right cusp of the aortic valve, that is the outlet part of the IVS. And the part of the IVS in short axis, this is the RBOT, this is the LBOT, that is direct contact with the, or the close to the pulmonary valve, this is the part that is the outlet part of the interventricular septum. 
and so in the classical Lloyd's view, the part of the eco, it is a part of the IVS that is close to the or contiguous with the aortic valve. That is RCC. It is the outlet part. And if we go for the Lloyd's RBOT view, this is the part adjacent to the or contact to the pulmonary valve. That is the outlet part. So it is the another diagrammatic picture showing the membranous part and outlet part in short axis. And so this is the echo, short axis view. This is the part, echogenic part is the outlet part, short axis view, and this is the membranous part. So this is the diagrammatic picture of the LBOT. So this is the this is the tricuspid valve leaflet septal, this is the pulmonary valve. This portion is the outlet septal. This portion is the outlet septal. So I will talk now about the trabecular muscular part of IVS. So this is the part of the interventricular septum that is the trabecular muscular part. And this is the outlet part and this is the trabecular muscular part. This is the parasternal loins view of the echo. And regarding the fourth chamber view, the part beyond the inlet part, so this is the inlet part, so and it is the trabecular muscular part. And regarding the short axis view, this is the morbid anatomy. And you can see this is the trabecular muscular septum here for age of description, this muscular part again have divided into three parts by imaginary plan. On these two imaginary plan, this divides into anterior portion, mid portion and posterior portion. It is divided for age of description for localize the BSD. I will describe it in latest, in latest, uh, latest slides. So the, the same thing is eco picture I have shown is the anterior portion of the trabecular muscular septum, mid portion and the posterior portion. And so in the conglomerate view, you can see the, all the black things in parasternal, long axis view, short axis view, and uh, apical four chamber view, five chamber view. These are the trabecular muscular septum. One thing is important, you will not never find any part of the trabecular muscular septum at the level of the great vessel short axis view. So we have talked about the different parts of the IVS. Now I will go to the type of BSD. It will be easy now to understand for the types of BSD. So according to the location of the IVS, BSD may be muscular BSDs or membranous BSD. This is one of the thought. They have divided it classification according to location and margin of the BSD. They mean the muscular BSDs like margin is bordered entirely by myocardium and can be trabecular, inlet and outlet inlet. And another sense, membranous BSDs, but these are not synonymous to perimembranous BSDs. These are bordered in part by fibrous continuity between the leaflets of the AV valve and an arterial valve. Often have an inlet, outlet and trabecular extension. The thing is that these muscular BSDs are easy to repair by surgery and is suitable for the device closure. But these are not amenable or not suitable for a device closure and it is tough for repair. repair. This is another classification and another, according, to, according to the location. This is perimembranous muscular doubly committed subarterial inlet septal ML alignment. I will discuss each and every time in separate slides. And periperimenous BSDs can be have subtypes according to the extension, inlet, anterior, or outlet. Muscular also have a subtype, outlet, trabecular, inlet, and periapical, like this. So periperimenous BSD is the most common, is the 80%. Conal septal or subarterial doubly committed defects are 5 to 7%, and inlet defects are 5 to 8%. So another method of classification that was previous initial days that was used, they used the, using the supraventricularis, crystal supraventricularis as the landmark. BSD can be divided into supracrystal and infracrystal. You can see this is the anatomy. This is the right ventricle. The free wall is removed. This is the supraventricular crest. So any defect that is located superior to this crest, that is the supracrystal, and any defect that is located below the, this crest is the infracrystal. 
And if you consider the short X is view at the great vessel level and mark an imaginary plan, the area that is led to this plan, that they are supracrystal BSD and area that right to this plan or that those are the infracrystal BSD. Now, if uh, there are someone who can understand the interventricular septum by subcostal BSD, don't be afraid of, I'm talking it like, this is a morbid anatomy. You can see that there are different the section, the section. If you go this cross section, you will go to the, this view, and you will go this LVOT view. This is the trabecular muscular part, and this is the membranous part of my view. This is the aorta. And if you go this plan, you will get RBOT. And this is the, you can identify the outlet muscular VSD in this view. And this is the trabecular part, this is the outlet part. More rightward, more towards the apex, you will get the more the all are trabecular muscular part. But beauty of this view is the apical muscular VSD not be negotiated from trans thoracic view. Then sometimes the subcostal views may help. So on the basis of location again, I'm repeating the perimembranous outlet BSD, inlet BSD, trabecular mus muscular BSD. So regarding the perimembranous BSD, how can it be identified? I think there are some synonym, including the perimembranous BSD. Someone, it was written in different details as the membranous defect or in practice defect. Nowadays, these are not used in, in textbooks or literature. So how can we identify the perimembranous BSD? There are BSD. There are some landmarks. Those which are landmark, it is situated in contact with the fibrous trigon, therefore in direct contact with the tricuspid valve at the commission between the anterior and septal leaflet and aortic valve. For easy remember, for easy memory, it is just keep it. The BSDs which are in direct contact with the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and the non-coronary cusp of the aortic valve, that is the perimembranous BSD. And see, this is the location of the perimembranous BSD. I'm repeating this anatomy. It is located in contiguous with the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and the and the right coronary and non-coronary cusp of the aortic valve. And this is in five chamber view. Five chamber view. This is the perimembranous part of the location of the perimembranous BSD. It is in contact with the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and the right cusp of the aortic valve. And for for the for the echocardiographic view, this is the parasternal long axis inlet view. Mind it, your perimembranous view, you will not find it in classical long axis view. You have to tilt it towards the right ventricular inflow, then you will get a, the defect in this location. And this is the another subcostal subcostal view, four chamber view or frontal view. You can see this is the location of the VSD that is in contact with the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and right cast of the aortic valve. Now, perimembranous VSD have some subtypes. I have, I have told it previously that it may extend in different ways, that it may have perimembranous BSD, BSD with outlet extension, trabecular extension, inlet extension, or extension to all the parts having the very large VSD. And you can see this is the diagrammatic picture. This is the perimembranous part of the BSD, and it may extend toward the outlet part, trabecular part, inlet part, like so. So this is the picture, short axis view at the great vessel level. This is the location of the perimembranous part, perimembranous BSD. And this is the still picture showing two VSD J of closing VSD. I'll show the video. So you can see here, there is two VSD jets, one from LB to RB, another from LB to RA. RA. These are found in the mostly those of the BSD are getting closed by septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. So I'll talk now about the defect, the outlet BSD. Obviously, the defect that involves the outlet part of the IVS, that is the outlet BSD. An outlet BSD have some eponym, or but uh, like the it, uh, someone calls the supracrystal BSD, 
infundibular VSD, conal VSD. But these subpulmonary and doubly committed subarterial VSD have some different description. I will talk it later on. So VSD can be, outlet VSD can be described in more precise way and such that the, it may be outlet muscular. That is the border entirely by myocardium. These are the VSD may be amenable for device clonal. An outlet VSD that is in part by fibrous continuity of the aortic bulb and other parts by myocardium. And subpulmonic outlet VSD, doubly committed outlet, doubly committed subarterial VSD. Mind it, this is doubly committed subarterial, not subaortic. So this is the location of the outlet VSD. I have marked it 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. It is, there are some literature they have described. As for example, this is the LBOT, if you think it as an clock, and this is the RBOT, then any defect that is confined to this location, you can describe it, there is defect involving the outlet part at about the 12 o'clock position of the LBOT, then your description will be precise and surgeons can easily identify the location in spite of, in spite of searching the whole things. So you, you can describe it like that, that it is located at the one o'clock position of the LBOT. So in classical parasternal Lloyd's B, if you find any defect in this location, that is the outlet BST. And if you don't find this and you have to tilt it toward the, towards the RBOT inflow view, then that is the perimembranous base. So this is the classical side of the outlet VSD. And you can see the parasternal long axis view. This is the VSD, outlet VSD, parasternal long axis view. And you can see this is the outlet VSD, but there is some prolapse of the right coronary cusp of the Right, right cast of the, uh, that is RCC. Right cast of the aortic bulb. I'll show the video, then you can understand it. You can see this is the VSD. And this, the right uh, RCC is collapsing through the VSD, through the VSD and obstructing the VSD flow. And this is the omnia of size, and this patient have air. So you can see that, how is the prolapse, I can do. You can see this is the prolapse of the RCC inside into the VSD orifice. And you can see the next slide that is the with color flow. You can see there is prolapse and there is aortic regurgitation. And whenever there is prolapse of the right coronary cusp, then there, then there, there is air that impinges the anterior mitral leaflet of the mitral valve. But whenever there is prolapse of the NCC, this is the NCC then VSD direction will be towards the interventricular septum. So this is the um, an example of the subpulmonic VSD. When it is called a subpulmonic VSD, when the defect is very near to the pulmonary valve, but there are some, there is some muscular tissue attached to the pulmonary valve, that is the subpulmonic VSD. And I'm drawing your attention, there is some, uh, Many of the times, subpulmonic VSD and doubly community VSD may do and confusion to you, but there is some, you have to look for the two valve of pulmonary valve and aortic valve. I will show you in the next slide. So there's some, there's some description of the subarterial and doubly committed VSD. What is that? It is characterized by hypoplasia or absence of the infundibular or outlet symptom resulting in fibrous continuity between the aortic valve and pulmonary valves. And this determines that the semilinear valves are at the same level and forms the roof of the defect and can result in prolapse of the aortic valve cusp with or without aortic regurgitation, more common in person of oriental descent and color flows it immediately below the pulmonary valve and directed towards the RBOT and main pulmonary artery. Then what is that? And this is the location of the doubly committed VSD up to the pulmonary valve. I will show the video clip then. These are one of the things, this is a diagrammatic picture of fibrous skeleton of the heart. You can see there is fibrous continuity between the mitral tricuspid and the aortic valve. But pulmonary valve 
is attached with this fibrous skeleton by muscle skin. But whenever there is doubly committed VSD, you can see in normal valve, the pulmonary valve is located superior to the aortic valve. But whenever there is doubly committed VSD, the both the valve will be at the same level. How it looks like, I'll show you. So you can see the doubly committed VSD. This is the video loop. You can see. You can see very nicely. This is the pulmonary valve. This is the aortic valve. This is the VSD. And the both the valve are at the same level. And there is no tissue in between the two uh, pulmonary and aortic valves. This is the classical example of the doubly committed VSD. I'll show another example of video loop. You can see here. The both the valves at the same level. It may be, you can see the, I'm showing you. You can see the both the valve at the same level, same level. Is it more clear? So this is the BSD. So this is the classical example of the BSD, doubly committed BSD. There is no tissue beneath the pulmonary valve, but Regarding the subpulmonic BSD, there will be some tissue beneath the pulmonary valve. And interesting is that you can see the, if you see the next bucala flow along the doubly committed BSD, this flow goes to the RBOT and directly to the pulmonary valve. The sometimes, if you see any continuous Doppler along the pulmonary valve, you, you may gradient the BSD gradient along the pulmonary valve. So sometimes it may commit and mistakes or confusion that the, there is pulmonary valvular stenosis. That happens in easier practical life. But to exclude the confusion, you have to select the 2D images and you have to see the good opening of the pulmonary valve that merges with the wall of the pulmonary valve. That, then you can be sure that, that there is no stenosis in the pulmonary valve. So I'll talk now the inlet VSD. Obviously, the defect that inlet that inlet part of the IVS that is the inlet VSD. Inlet VSD have two two types. The inlet muscular VSD bordered entirely by myocardium, and there is muscle tissue beneath the atrioventricular valve. And inlet VSD AV canal type, there will be no muscle tissue below the atrioventricular valve. Both atrioventricular valve are at the same level. And I'll show it. This is the diagrammatic picture. This is the apical fourth chamber view. You can see this is the inlet, this part when it is involved, that is the inlet muscular beast. Why? This is the uh, atrioventricular valve and there is some muscle tissue. So this is the inlet muscular, the entire margin is bordered by myocardium. But this is the inlet BSD or AV canal type because there is no muscle tissue below the AV valve. So I'll show the picture. This is a synolo. You can see the typical picture of the inlet VSD. There is no muscle tissue beneath the AV valve. And you can see, you can see both the leaflets are at the same level, same level. And they are attached at the lower end of the interventricular septum, interactual septum. Or in other words, they are suspended at the lower end of the interactual septum. So this is the example of the apical fourth chamber view showing the inlet muscular. Whenever you have a confusion, then make a fourth chamber view in crux level. And if you get that, there is some deviation of the septal leaflet or, or offsetting of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid bulb, then it is sure that there is some tissue beneath the AV valve. So this is the muscular tissue. This is the inlet muscular VSD. There is some tissue beneath the Everyone. This is the example of the inlet muscular VSD. Now about the defect involved in the trapecular muscular part of the IVS. So this is the part that is when it is being affected by any defect that is the trapecular muscular VSD. You see this is the outlet part and this is the trapecular muscular part. And this is the fourth chamber view. So this is the a trabecular muscular part, this is the inlet part. So any defect involving this, this is the inlet BSD. But this is the trabecular muscular BSD. Now, again, the trabecular muscular BSD can be subtypes according to their uh, location inside the trabecular muscular septum. They may be anterior, mid, posterior, 
at the papillary muscle level, apical level. They may be marginal trabecular muscular VSD. Again, they may be anterior, posterior, central, apical, switches. I will show some, some example that will be clarified here. So again, this, the defects in the muscular symptom are frequently multiple and make up five to 20% of the defect. And muscular defect may be by location, central, apical, marginal, switch is septum. Switch is septum, that is large number of muscular defect. So I'll show now. This is an example. Short axis view at the parasternal, uh, parasternal short axis view, there's the papillary muscle level. And I, I have explained it. This septum can be divided into three parts. That is the anterior, posterior, middle and mid and posterior. So for ease of description, any defect that involves this part, you can describe it. There is a defect or VSD involving the mid portion of the trabecular muscular septum at the level of the passing by, papillary muscle level. So involving the anterior septum at the level like this. So you have to describe the trabecular muscular symptom in this fashion so that surgeon can find out easily but from your description, the, what is the location of the VSD, VSD. Now it is the example of the marginal VSD. What is mean by any defect that is located when the, it is the interventricular septum, this is the RV free one. And it meets with the RV free one, this point, any defect, that occurs this area, that is at the junction of the IVS2 RV free wall, that is the part of the marginal VSD. It may be again anterior when it is located anteriorly, and it may be posterior when it is posterior. These are the marginal VSDs, very notorious, very in surgical perspective, very perspective, very difficult to find out, and very difficult to stitch it. Now switch is defect. Muscular defect that may have numerous openings of variable size on the right ventricular side, but only a single opening on the left ventricular side of the septum. This is referred to as the switch is defect. But some of the literature, they say that multiple holes or multiple defect involving the trabecular muscular septum, that is also switch is defect. So this is an example of the trabecular muscular VSD. And this is the another example of the trabecular muscular VSD with sinuous course. And this is the example of the marginal VSD, posterior marginal VSD. You can see the video. It is located at the junction of the IVS and at the RV free wall. So this is the color flow. This is the large VSD. So now I'll talk now about the garbot defect, or jarbot defect. It is located in the membranous portion of the atrioventricular septum. It is a left ventricular to right atrial uh, defect, uncommon, small, echo. It can be seen from an apical approach, angling the, angling the transducer anteriorly and superiorly. And so in diagrammatic picture, this is the site of the garbo defect. And in apical fourth chamber view, this is the defect, location of the defect of garbo defect. So now I'll talk the traumatic VSD occurs most commonly in the muscular septum near the apex, but perimembranous defect have been reported associated with tricuspid valve injury. Multiple traumatic VSDs may also occur and a direct blow to the chest is the most common mechanism for creating this VSD. So now I'll talk how to evaluate the size of the ventricular septal defect. Very important. So, regarding the ventricular size, you have to measure the aortic annulus and the size of the VSD in two orthogonal plan. So, it is expressed in compared to the size of the aortic root for classifying the size of the VSD. And measurement of the VSD is done by taking maximum diameter in two plans that are at 90 degree to each other. That is orthogonal plan. So, Depending on the size, the VSDs may be large VSD, moderate size VSD, small VSDs. So, according to these authors, Berlitz Cruz, there are different uh, uh, literature, different authors. They have, there is some variation, but more or less same. Everyone have 
use the aortic annulus as the parameter or gold standard but other author they have used the body surface i will i will show it the large bsd if the bsd size is more than aortic annulus moderate bsd if the diameter of the bsd is 50% to 100% of the aortic annulus small bsd that is diameter less than half of the aortic annulus this is the one thought another is that the aim scoping they use a large bsd is one that is more than half to two third of the aortic annulus size and this is the aura i think this is more perfect but this is cumbersome in clinical practice it may read according to the body surface area the large defect that is more than 1.0 square centimeter per square meter body surface area that is large and more less than 0.5 is the small but it is cumbersome in clinical practice but i think this is the applicable practical in real life this is that the most adults large lesions that approximate the size of the aortic root moderate the lesion is one third to two third of the diameter of the aortic root small bsd less than one third of the aortic root diameter pin hole very small a tiny lesions that is less than 2 mm in diameter and detected only by color flow mapping and this is how to measure the aortic annulus in systole you have to make the aortic annulus then you have to measure the bsd in one axis that is the long axis it is 13 you can see the same patient the aortic annulus is 22 it is the adult here the bsd size 13 and in short axis it is 29 so it is the very large bsd more more than the aortic annulus so and this is another example The BSD size is six in long axis view. BSD size is ten in short axis view, and this patient have aortic annulus of ten. I have not mentioned it, so it is large BSD. So now I will talk about the restrictive and unrestrictive type of BSD. What is mean by? It? Actually, this can be typed as a BSD can be grouped into two categories: it is restrictive and unrestrictive. so it is determined by pressure difference between the left ventricle and right ventricle through the bsd how can it be measured it is a spectral doppler obviously continuous wave doppler is used to determine the velocity across the bsds and to estimate the gradient between the ventricles and this is the way you can measure you can parallel the continuous wave doppler along the bsd flow and you will get the this spectral image and you can you can have measured the peak gradient But here it is 73 so this bsd is restricted this is the continuous wave doppler cursor so there are variation or spectrum of restrictiveness one is the velocity greater than 2.5 can imply that the defect is restrictive that is any restrict gradient that is more than 25 mm mercury that is restrictive but it is in lower range there are other here there is moderately restrictive if the pressure difference is 25 to 60 mm and restrictive bsd rb and pa pressures are lower than the lb with pressure gradient more than 60 mm mercury and restrictive it is taken from the eco manual washington the gradient typically more than 75 actually we can take it as a 60 mm mercury that is the true restrictive and another restrictive and non restrictive that is depends on the pathophysiology they have they have analyzed three variables three variables on the shunt value another is the pulmonary to aortic systemic pressure ratio and the direction of the net shunt restrictive bsd it is a small shunt then there will be some less than 1.4 and pulmonary to systemic aortic pressure ratio will be less than 0.3 and there will be left net left ratio moderately restrictive bsd there will be moderation the shunt will be 1.4 to 2.2 the pulmonary and aortic ratio will be pressure ratio will be less than 0.6 and there will be net left ratio large non restrictive shunt will be more than 2.2 pressure ratio between pulmonary and aortic will be more than 0.6 but still there will be left ratio but eisen mentions when there will be shunt less than 0.1.1 and the pulmonary aortic ratio is 1 that is by pressure in the aorta and pulmonary is same and there will be net right to left shunt 
So now I'll talk about the male alignment. What does it mean by the type of the male alignment? So there is a defect in the alignment that is can occur in between two levels. There may be male alignment between the conal or outlet septum and to the trabecular septum, and there may be male alignment between the interactor septum and inlet part of the interventricular septum. So, a conal septum to a trabecular muscular septum male element. What is this? The business is characterized by a deviation of the outlet septum in relation to its adjoining trabecular parts. And these have three types. One is the anterior male alignment, another is the posterior male alignment, another is the rotational male alignment. What is been by anterior male alignment? When the outlet septum appears anterior and to the Entry to the trabecular septum with the VSD interposed, that is found in top. What is posterior male alignment? When the outlet septum appears posterior to the trabecular septum and it is found in the interrupted aortic arch and severe coarctation. And rotational male alignment is found in toxic being hard defect. It is the doubly committed type defect. DORB, sorry, DORB. Actually, this is then the diagrammatic picture. I don't know what is the value of this drawing. I have made it self. It is a short axis equivalent of the echo. You can see this is the outlet septum. In natural course, it should come towards this part. You have to meet with the, this, the perimenous part. But instead of coming this direction, this septum has gone in this direction. And this is the anterior direction. And this is the right, left decision, direction. So whenever there is deviation of the conal septum in the leftward and anteriorly, then is the conal deviation, conal septal deviation. This is the classical example of the top. And if you consider the parasternal low axis view, this is the trabecular muscular septum, this is the outlet septum. And this is the deviation. So there is malalignment between the conal septum and trabecular muscular septum and with VHD interposed. This is the still picture of the parasternal short axis of the classical example of the TOF. You can, this is the outlet septum. Instead of coming towards this direction, he has gone to this direction. This is the anterior, anterior location, anterior direction, this is the left direction. So it is deviated towards the left and anterior. And it makes the RBOT narrow. And there is also pulmonary valvular stenosis. This is an, another example of the same concept. This is the conal septum deviated towards the left and anterior. And you can see this is the picture. You can see the conal septal deviation. This is the membranous part of the IVS. This is the tricuspid bulb, aortic bulb, and the pulmonary bulb have stenosis. Very good picture depicting the classical picture of the top tetralogy of fallow. And this is the deviation of the conal septum and atrial septum, trabecular muscular septum. If someone consider about the subcostal view, if this is the sagittal plan, uh, sagittal plan uh, axis, sagittal subcostal view, and we can see this is the trabecular muscular septum. This is the conal septum. In natural course, it, it, it has to come to this direction to join with this trabecular muscular septum. But instead of joining this, she is deviated towards this side. And this is the anterior side. So it is moved towards the anterior side. And this is the superior side. So it is deviated towards anteriorly and superior. And making the deviation of the conal septum and the male alignment. So when should one is to use the conoventricular VSD? When one should use the term? Actually, whenever there is alignment of the conal septum in relation to the trabecular septum, that is the conoventricular VSD. And you can see this is the example of the posterior malalignment of the conal septum. Here the VSD occurs in association with the posterior deviation of the conal septum that often results in sub aortic obstruction. That is the outlet septum or conal septum deviated towards the posteriorly and cause the subaortic obstruction. Now I'll talk about the male alignment between the interactive septum to the inlet part of the IVS. 
and this malalignment this malalignment of the posterior septum of the atrial septum relative to the malalignment of portion of the ventricular septum of the or the atrial septum relative to the interventricular septum in which case av valve usually overrides the vsd it is usually found in av canal defect i will show the example that will more clear your concept so it is the drawing showing the it is the alignment between the interventricular septum and interatrial septum these are the av valves and you can see this is the deviation of the trabecular muscular inlet part of the septum or the interventricular septum in relation to the interatrial septum it is deviated towards the left so there is malalignment and this deviation may happen in any direction it may happen in towards the left towards the right and there may be deviation of the interatrial septum this deviation or malalignment it is classically found in av canal defect and it may cause the overriding of the av valve overriding means this leaflet may override this vsd can reach into this opposite vsd that is override and it may have an steadily steadily means the, if the caudal attachment have this caudal valve of the left sided valve have caudal attachment of the right side now i will talk about the spontaneous closure of vsd so the size of the vsd is the single most important variable large vsds are less likely to close spontaneously while smaller vsd have higher chances of early spontaneous closure although more than 50% of large vsds show a decrease in size in relation to body surface area only 5 to 10% close completely and up to 60% of smaller vsds close completely and vsds have a tendency to close spontaneously this fact is relevant in decision about the operation and spontaneously closure can be complete by one year of age and the defect may have by may have only narrowed by then with complete closure taking considerably longer so these are the some states of small vsd approximately 70% of small vsd probably close 25% close spontaneously by 18 months 15% by 4 months 75% by 10 years sorry 15% by 4 years 75% by 10 years now the mechanism of narrowing of the core closure regarding the perimembranous vsd is the narrowing or closure of core usually by adherence of tricuspid leaflet or caudal tissue to the edges of the vsd so one mechanism another is there the fourth perimembranous vsd the reduplication of the tricuspid valve tissue addition of the septal leaflet of the around the defect and prolapse of the aortic bulb into the vsd a small muscular vsd consequence to the proliferation of the endothelial tissue and this is one example of the closing vsd by tri septal leaflet of the tricuspid bulb and it can have an aneurysmal shape and this is another picture of closing vsd by septal leaflet of the tricuspid bulb now mechanism another mechanism of muscular vsd that closed by in growth and hypertrophy of muscle in infants this is thought to be a continuation of the uterine process of coalescence of sheets of muscle to close the interventricular channels so aortic regurgitation how it is happened a perimembranous defect in an immediate subaortic position or doubly permitted vsd may be associated with progressive tear that i have shown in previous slide now these are the associated defects that may be found in with vsd that is coarctation vsd pda intracardiac uh, obstruction subpulmonic subaortic stenosis mitrastenosis like so now pathophysiology i'll show on slide this the consequence depends on the size of the vsd and pulmonary vascular resistance what happens at birth the pvr is high and there is if any deterioration despite the presence of a large defect but the resistance to flow gradually falls over the first weeks of life 
permitting a progressively greater amount of blood to flow through the BSD to RB, to lungs, to LA and LB. And most infants, the LB volume overload causes the LBF, leading to increased LB end diastolic pressure, increased LA pressure, and pulmonary congestion. Now, regarding the natural history of the pulmonary vascular disease, it's a very important, uh, very important because for this, you have to close the BSD. We have to want to avoid this pulmonary vascular disease. It is almost exclusively encountered, encountered with large vessels. So the incidence of the pulmonary vascular obstructive disease in infants with large VSD is estimated at 10 to 25 percent. However, it is relatively uncommon for severe pulmonary vascular obstructive disease to occur below the age of two years. Now, associated pulmonary hypertension is generally reversible in the first 12 months of life. Thereafter, it becomes progressively less likely to regress. Infants and children with pulmonary systolic pressure in excess of 50% of the systemic arterial systolic pressure beyond the first year of life are at increased risk for complication. So, it is important to remember that the development of pulmonary vascular disease is a tragedy that can be prevented with virtually no mortality by VSD closure. So I'll talk a few words about the clinical features now. Now clinical features, I think it depends upon the size of VSD, pulmonary vascular resistance and related complication. So it varies, it may be asymptomatic with marvel. There may be features of the heart failure or features of the isolated syndrome syndromes and others. During childhood, the clinical features are predominantly due to heart failure, and in adulthood, there is features of pulmonary hypertension when predominant. The typical murmur of BSD is really hard at birth because the high level of pulmonary vascular resistance causes limitation to BSD flow, though, though through even an unrestricted BSD, two levels are insufficient to provide an audible murmur. And major fall in PVR is accomplished in normal infant within two weeks, then the murmur becomes obvious. So for large BSD, congestive failure is an almost inevitable complication of the large BSD. And approximately 80% of infants with large BSD require hospitalization by age of four. And risk of death with congestive failure is in range of 11%. So three like the left lower sternal border is common. And these are the types of murmur according to the size. Large BSD, there is deep crescendo or ejection systolic murmur. Moderate BSD, hollow systolic harsh. Small BSD, the hollow systolic harsh or early systolic ejection systolic type, muscular BSD for muscular BSD. So ECG. So ECG, it is the interpretation of the hemodynamic effect of the BSD. It causes the Chamber enlargement, that is dilatation, with or without hypertrophy, resulting in the change of electrical amplitude reflected in the surface of the ESD. ECG, so reflection of chamber enlargement, there is conduction disturbances and arrhythmia. Small restrictive BSD usually produce small normal tracing of ESD. ECG, for moderate to large BSD, you can get, have the uh, features of left atrial overload that is P wave, broad and nosed characteristic of the left atrial overload, and deep Q and tall R waves in, with tall Q waves in the B5, B5, B6, that evidence of left ventricular volume overload. And this is the picture of the Q B5, B6, one, heavier. There is some cats was still phenomena. What does it mean? There is biphasic reflection in the limblet and the mid precordial leak, that is B2 to B5, it does means that there is combined hypertrophy of the left ventricle and right ventricle and indicate the significant pulmonary hypertension. And ECG is now usually normal with RBV with post VSD closure patients. Now, X ray. X ray, this is aimed to evaluate the hemodynamic effect of the VSD on heart and pulmonary vasculature. And we have to assess the size of the heart and pulmonary vascular marking. For size of heart, it is the assessment of the size of the different cardiac chambers. 
the pulmonary vascular marking look for both the central and peripheral portions of the lung kidney. For small VSD, the normal heart size. Regarding heart size, the moderate to large VSD, cardiac enlargement of varying severity may be found. Is found. Small for pulmonary vascular marking, small VSD, normal past pulmonary vascular markings. But for moderate to large VSDs, increased pulmonary vascular markings in both the central and peripheral portions of the lung fields and the main pulmonary artery segment is prominent whenever there is no, no severe pulmonary hypertension. And large VSD or marked elevation of the PVA, marked prominence of the main pulmonary artery and its adjacent vessels with decreased pulmonary vascularity in the outer third of the lung fields. So, in large BSD, the peripheral arterial markings become attenuated and pruned and produced in the outer third of the mark lung field with markedly increased pulmonary vascular disease. So, this is an X-ray cardiac enlargement, moderate size BSD, cardiac enlargement, and the plethoric lung field. There is increased vascular markings, but this is not conspicuous in this film. And this is the classical feature of the large BSD with failure in interstitial edema. And this is the picture of our Eisenmenger symbol. Any BSD that large or moderate BSD that have enlarged BSD, ultimately it shrinks towards the normal size that indicates that there is severe pulmonary hypertension and indicative of Eisenmenger syndrome. And now, <clears throat> Echocardiographic findings, I have already talked many of the features of the echocardiographic findings because size, uh, <coughs> type, size, and restriction malalignment, all these things are echocardiographically evaluated. So this is the diagnostic test for the VSD. If one asks the one test for diagnosis of the VSD, it is a comprehensive echocardiography. So yeah, before uh, you, to complete the echocardiography, you have to make the, assure the, determine the situs of the abdominal organ, whether it is solidus, inverse, and ambiguous. You have to make sure the position of the cardiac apex, like what is, whether it is levocardia, mesocardia, dextrocardia. Make sure of the atrioventricular connection, ventricular arterial connection, relationship of the gate vessels, and position of the aortic arch. Now you are to make this checklist for therefore assessment of the VSD with echocardiogram. You are to tell about the, what are the segments of the IVS that is involved by VSD, what is the size of VSD, border of the VSD, and is septal component, is there a malalignment? There is relation of the cardiac valves and other defect. What is the relation of the atrioventricular valve, portal attachment to the defect? How many defects are there? And you are to determine the direction and timing of flow by color flow mapping through the BSD. And you are to <coughs> Doppler align across the BSD to measure the gradient across the BSD that I have talked to. So you are to measure the relationship of the aorta, pulmonary, aortic bulbs like this. You are to determine the left and right ventricular size function as well as evidence of the RV pressure or volume overload and associated problem right now about this term, this function, regurgitation, obviously very important. You are to calculate the pulmonary systolic pressure. How to measure it? You can measure the RV pressure by, dis by destructing, destructing or the <clears throat> trans BSD gradient from the arm pressure. You have to mind out, uh, find out the arm systolic pressure. Then you have to minus from this the Trans BSD uh, flow gradient. Another uh, estimation you have to estimate it by tricuspid regurgitation. But between those, uh, regarding these two techniques, you must be sure that there is no aortic stenosis and in this technique there is no arbitrary obstruction. So, cardiac catheterization actually, it, uh, these are not uh, cardiac catheterization and seen in Jacob no longer routinely used in patients with simple VSDs. Now, when surgical intervention is under consideration in older children, cardiac care generally indicated to assess the pulmonary vascular resistance and any associated anomalies. 
and shows an on increase in oxygen saturation at the level of the RB level, reflecting left to right ventricular shunt. And it will, it will get at ventricular level more than 5% oxygen step. And because low sensitivity of the oxygen, oximetry may fail to detect small VSD whenever there is less than one, shunt level is less than one. And helpful in eliminating the possibility of associated PDA or of unsuspected partition of the aorta if the arch cannot be well imaged by echocardiography. And the, if you take the cine angiography, it is the LAO view that is suitable for detection of the perimembranous BSD. For outlet BSD, it is the RAO view. And for the inlet BSD, it is the 45 LAO view with the steep 30 to 40% cranial angulation. So these are the other non-invasive diagnostic method. These are the magnetic resonance imaging that can be helpful for diagnostic BSD and dynamic 3D echocardiography. And in some cases, for <clears throat> great vessels and pulmonary vasculature, you can use the CT angiogram. <clears throat> so medical management of the BSD, I'll talk very few. So management of the symptomatic infants is directed at improving its symptoms before surgery and buying time while spontaneous closure or diminution in the size of it. And diuretics for reduction of the preload angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors for after load detection and digitalized glycosides can be used. Now the indication and timing of surgery, and this is the timely and rightful application of the knowledge. If you become too late, there will be irreversible pulmonary vascular disease and it will get no help for the patients. So these are the indication of the surgery. These are the characteristics you should consider for surgery. These are the characteristics of the defect patient's age and symptom, pulmonary vascular resistance, associated cardiac and non-cardiac defect. And these are the guidelines in 2018, the CCR guidelines, that the guidelines, I will not go details to this, it is written in the book, for evaluation or indication of the surgery. But one thing, BSD closure is contraindicated. When BSD closure should not be performed in adults with severe pulmonary hypertension, and pH systolic pressure more than two thirds of the systemic pulmonary vascular and pulmonary vascular resistance more than two thirds systemic and or net right to left side. And for infancy, these are the characteristics if you were to evaluate. The large and symptomatic BSD should be closed. Medium sized BSD is associated with failure to thrive. All BSD is associated with aortic incompetence. All inlet or outlet BSDs. Residual BSD is more than three millimeter or those associated with elevated peer pressure and BSD is irrespective of size if associated other and other reasons of for cardiac surgery. So indication of the surgery, elective surgery is usually performed between three and nine months of age. Now the interventional closure, interventional catheterization for device closure and these are the trabecular VSD suitable for device closure mostly those who are located at the basal part of the IVS have proven more available to this technique. Straightforward anatomy and muscular ring to which the device can attaches well extended closure rates with a lower procedural mortality for perimembranous BSD. A ring of two millimeter between the defect and the aortic valve is required, and the patient weight must be more than eight kg. But some muscular BSD closure devices have been placed in infants as small as 3.2 kg. So I am at the end of my, my topics. It is the wisdom and knowledge, very favorite slide of mine. Wisdom implies the timely and rightful application of knowledge. Knowledge may even be a pitfall or an encumbrance unless you learn to use it just. So thank you for your patience hearing. For thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's very nice and informative. Most of the most easy going lectures, sir. This is a tutorial based class. I think uh, in the mathematical class, I think. I think so. I think thank you, sir, for your I think poetic class, romantic class. We are learn, we are hearing from you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Kojam, sir. Dr. Wadu, sir, please do comment, sir. You know, listening to this lecture, I was mesmerized. And I was so feeling so uh, soulful because during my studentship, 
or in, in initial training period do not have this sort of lecture this sort of understanding with the advance of echocardiography of various imaging modalities and more advances in the understanding of the pathophysiology all these things uh, have become much easier to understand and Professor Kumar Chamal has gone through the whole thing uh, with so diligence and has just taken out the gist. Is just taking out honey from in hundreds of thousands of flower, making a one teaspoonful of honey. It's like that. And we are really grateful to you, Professor Chamal. We are really grateful for your nice appearance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think no question left. I think it's so nicely presented, sir. To the measure, sir, please uh, come. Can I, can, I, can I make a, a question? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. I think I'm a student. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> uh, you have actually talked about what happens even after the plastic closure. We get some patients with certain problems like persistence of pulmonary hypertension or residual VSD shun. How do we detect, how do we approach to these patients? Can you talk about that? Actually, residual VSD that is talked about that, if it is tiny, tiny VSD means the size is less than 2 millimeters. It is acceptable. And if Provided if there is no a significantly increased PA pressure. But in other terms, there are some subsets of patients. They have the particular septal defect as well as they have the genetic, genetic message for development of the idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension. These are the subsets that they subsequently develop the severe pulmonary hypertension in spite of timely closure of the BSD or HD. So, for any tiny residual uh, BSD, if we can uh, uh, keep it left for follow up. Uh, but one important if, uh, issue is that you have to be careful about the infective endocarditis and you have to use prophylaxis. And I, I think in some of these patients in whom the vessel type of pulmonary uh, vascular disease develops, Nowadays, they are doing some angioplasties in those vessels, plain angioplasties, giving some good effect. Is it so? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Mashka, sir. Chodhi Mashka, sir. Mm. You also are the best sir. Yes, sir. I never had the opportunity to praise Kobiru Zaman, but in his <laughs> heart, I believe he's, he's, the, he's the only dedicated echocardiographer in the doctor body. Right? who has dedicated one hour after completing his five hours course of cardiology. I, in the depth of my heart, had always respect for him. And, and the ventricular septal defect and its location and its numerous name, it, it has so many names and so con it has been so confusing from, for years together, has made so simplified by this lecture. It made me feeling that I'm, 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 I'm just floating Within the stars, in the in the last lecture there was nozzle nozzle storm stars lecture, and now another lecture. It it makes me so grateful to to IPDI to Professor Wadud and Dr. Mohsin for giving us the opportunity to become uh, astronaut without in this pandemic time. I really had a great great feelings of moving from start to start through this IPDI, and. Similar way, the way I, I was spellbound with, with Professor Nazir Islam's lecture today, Kobiru Zaman also has made the same impact on my mind. I'm so grateful to yeah. all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any, any comments, sir? Uh, Meshka, sir, any comment about the PhD for the, the for exam, examining? Professor Examinee is hearing, you are the ex, examiner uh, for the mm -hmm. examiner in the, in the uh, I think, long case, also short case, also, I think, the uh, the clinical examination of ventricular septal defect is an important part of clinical examination for, by the student because these are being commonly placed in the uh, during the examination both in 
long cases and short cases. Also, when when they are they face the viva viva board and uh, OSP session, everywhere there can be either ECG, X-ray, and the clinical findings. The whole spectrum of clinical variation that occurs along with the hemodynamic change in particular patient should be well uh, well appreciated by the patient and they should uh, the examiner should be able to make a clean differential diagnosis at each, each stage of ventricular septal defect that produces specific symptoms due to specific hemodynamic alteration to similar hemodynamic changes in other congenital heart disease or in other valvular disease. So they, they, has, they, they should rationalize their finding with a differential diagnosis which, which, which is compatible with the finding that is prevailed in, in, in the patient. That, that, is, that is why I, I wanted to say. Another important thing is that actually what is, what is written in the, in the textbook and what we think that the, these are in the textbook is, book is not true. I personally, this is my, my belief that everything that is written in the book can be well delineated clinically, at least clinically. And if we, if we are really very careful about the clinical examination and methodical in clinical examination, many things can be sought out from the clinical examination. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor M. Nozul, sir. Sir, uh, you have the you. lots of experience, sir. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, uh, actually, I just start to my grateful thanks. And also, I am really, really very, uh, very delighted to hear the presentation of Kobe, which, uh, whom I like very best. Of course, I also very like uh, Professor Meskat, uh, with whom actually I work and we share many things about echocardiography. So uh, we uh, have got some, a few comments. Uh, some comments from uh, Meskat, Professor Meskat, the clinical is very important. We must yes. understand that three, we are mainly, mainly over here are mainly uh, adult cardiologists. So adult, adult cardiologists usually mainly want to deal with the goods. And uh, there is two aspects over here. One is the diagnosis, another is the assessment, and to communicate with the surgeons. These three points are very important. And for the fellows, uh, one important aspect I want to say is the clinical aspect. In my early days, say in 1980s and 81, when I started echocardiography, uh, and just transform my experience from just plain AMO echocardiography to simple 2D echocardiography. Uh, at that time, one of, one of my Japanese um, uh, <clears throat> mentor uh, told me that, uh, Dr. Islam, you suspect a VSD in echocardiography and then confirm it by auscultation. Possibly this is very important in case of only uh, VSD. Uh, if you do not find any VSD and when you clinically suspect that you have VSD, remember possibly you are right that there is VSD. So you must go through in different ways. So of course, there are even in the modern days of echocardiography, uh, sometimes it is very difficult to diagnose VSD, to, uh, to classify VSD, to see its pathological sequences, test with VSD. Uh, starting from our older days, I think Professor Jalal Sar is also there. At that time, the only diagnosis was confirmed by angiography, because at that time, echocardiography was not uh, at, at this level, and we should not uh, go for the surgery for uh, only with echocardiography. In that case, already we do an LV graphy in, uh, in two view, RAO and LV, as, uh, as COVID has said. And that reason, actually, our second cat in ICVD was a biplane echocardiography, where we yes. do it by one shot. So this is one uh, aspect. Another aspect uh, I want to say is uh, the Swiss cheese defect. That is very difficult sometimes to identify, to number it, how many numbers is there. So that is uh, another important aspect. So in this aspect, I actually, uh, I request as at least both of them, both of them meet uh, Professor Meskat and Professor uh, <clears throat> Obir. Uh, why don't we start doing 3D echocardiography yeah, to supplement our physical, uh, our 2D echo and uh, Doppler echo. So that will be very, very important for us. And we should uh, also be very careful about the atrioventricular septal defect. Uh, the term already in different name he has described. And I congratulate uh, Kobir for his hand drawing. Seems very, very important and very uh, nice to look at at the center. <laughs> so, 
so <laughs> it's very uh, rude job and uh, uh, another thing as uh, i want to say is about uh, few thing not about the subject for the other things i think we have already least uh, reached in our cardiology in bangladesh at certain level we must sub specialize ourselves we must have developed some people to for goose some develop for heart failure some go for coronary artery disease intervention is there and even then there there should be people who can treat uh, goose this is very very important i i think uh, we have got tremendous number of large number of uh, younger cardiologists who are very much uh, 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 very much uh, uh, acceptable to these uh, sub specialties sub specialties if we do not use them if you do not help them grow possibly they will not grow at the same time the country will not grow so those who are in the middle or in the higher level or older like we people try to develop pick up those people and try to develop them give them uh, give them uh, uh, opportunity to learn it so that they can develop they can carry out the high uh, yeah, specialty in upper level otherwise we, we cannot do that If one man is doing echocardiography doing cardiography we, uh, angioplasty uh tavi anything so that is not the way of doing it so even if our, our neighboring countries are going in sub specialty of cardiology so with this i like to thank everybody especially the course directors and of course uh, dr kobi thank you very much kobi thank you sir thank you for talking about the good blood blood our uh, periodic specialist yeah the famous professor abdul salam sir is here uh, please the comments about the good uh thank you very much uh, for selecting me as a panelist uh, first of all i like to thanks to professor uh, 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 if i if i uh, uh, interfere with i don't half a minute actually basically when i came from japan and i start i wanted to start at uh, 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 pediatric cardiology but somewhere or other uh, i could not do that and that was my own of the spell so after that anyway i professor salam and i tried to develop a pediatric cardiology Uh, with the, with many of ob- obstacle thank you salam thank you for this so i i forgot to mention your name as uh, the pioneer pediatric cardiologist of this country thank you actually sir thank you very much professor nazrul sir professor jalal sir is here uh, they are actually the uh, mentor of me and i learned many thing from them and they have uh, uh, both of them actually what is jalal sir was Uh, present in my viva board for selecting as a pediatric cardiologist i was in fact a pediatrician and having non invasive pediatric cardiology training from dhaka shishu hospital and there was a uh, project uh, uh, so from that i recruited and after that i learned many things uh, from professor nazrul sir because i was um, uh, working under him initially after up to one year of it then he has given me the unit as a separate uh, pediatric cardiologist <coughs> but under supervision of him so many things i learned from them uh, uh, and also professor adu then others professor kamul sir professor mohammed zaman i learned many things actually i am a pediatric cardiologist by experience not by education or by any degree so i am really come and uh, grateful to all of you uh, particularly those from uh, nicbd And including all the directors and all the senior professors and such. Next, I like to thanks to Professor Adud for uh, organizing such a very brilliant platform, IPDI. Uh, it is very essential uh, for learning cardiovascular and abnormalities uh, uh, in the day-to-day life. So, in this issue of uh, lecture from uh, our legend, Dr. Kaviru Jaman, he is really a very Uh, eminent uh, cardiologist not only a uh, adult cardiologist versatile on he, he knows uh, congenital as well as adult and uh, something else also so i like to congratulate and thanks uh, for his clear cut thank you thank you sir the demonstration of phd but uh, the thing is uh, which is absent here that is the uh, issues of goose uh, there is grown up congenital heart disease Uh, in uh, what are the issues what are the solutions in case of grown up congenital heart disease with vhd particularly in that respect uh, we should comment some things regarding say for most of the small vhd you will not get in after adolescent period so 
it will be closed by 10 years. So, uh, although we know the small VSD will uh, close, but our issue of talk is today is boost, grown up congenital heart disease. So, there are many cardiac issues, non cardiac issues, and general uh, issues. So, we should address that. And uh, number two is that the, regarding the cardiac issue of uh, heart disease, um, VSD, it may be unoperated case with complication or without complication. And it may be operated case with some residual problem or borderline case which are, which are running, inoperable or operable case in between. So, somewhere they are deferred from the uh, surgery. But important thing is the, that Prabhu Jawan nicely uh, pointed out the location of the VSD, where it is. Because it is very important for the surgical aspect uh, point of view, uh, particularly for the uh, incision from which approach, right atrial approach or pulmonary uh, arterial approach or ventricular approach, RBOT approach, which approach the surgeon will approach uh, uh, to the VSD. That is very important. Uh, uh, so location is very important. Another uh, thing I want to comment regarding the classification of VSD, it is sometimes confusing for the beginners because you have given a lot of classification. There is a classification given by Van Praak, given by Anderson, given by Kirkland. So the working classification is, I think, the, it is with the Anderson, and uh, he has given the there is the perimembranous, inlet, outlet, and muscular VSD. This simple classification. Then again, sub classification will then be. It, the Kamuzawan has nicely described, particularly with the ECO, as because he is master in ECO. So, different view with uh, diagrammatic picture, he has uh, uh, nicely described. So, now for a uh, operator or, or for a cardiologist, uh, you should understand this uh, different location. One thing is important that the anatomy is same, but the viewing or uh, that is the uh, um, classification is different. Why? So this is a great question. So um, last 70 years, regarding the nomenclature uh, of uh, congenital heart disease and their segmental analysis, there are variable opinions. The problem is the uh, older uh, the theories have not been cut out or, um, or they are discarded. So older theories and newer theories are still uh, uh, present. So uh, there is some confusion. So my final comment is that uh, regarding the issue of goose, uh, uh, adult or adult congenital heart disease or adolescent congenital heart disease, uh, who should be cared? Yes. Because there are many issues, including social issues, pregnancy, contraception. Uh, so uh, either pediatric cardiologist will uh, um, uh, inter, uh, treat or the adult cardiologist. So the, uh, uh, this subpopulation, for this subpopulation, there is a new idea of goose or adult congenital heart disease. So there, this is separate from pediatric cardiology and as well as adult cardiology. So uh, because of unique subset of uh, problems. So we must address those issues uh, when we are seeing a uh, goose patient with VSD. Thank you very much for giving me the chance. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Sufi Raman, Madam Vikas. Madam, uh, Professor Sufi Raman. Uh, the presentation was excellent, uh, no doubt about it. He has presented so nicely, so methodically, and as well as demonstrated it, followed by his um, uh, the meeting that will definitely help the fellows to see the real life what it is. Uh, from the theoretical side to the practical side. And that is a unique presentation, no doubt about it. Thank you very much. Uh, you, I'm, I'm proud of you because uh, uh, at one time you uh, trained you, but you are really done yes, very well. And yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Mohsen yeah. and Professor Rudu Chaudhary for giving uh, this um, uh, in uh, COVID era time, the everybody, the fellows, uh, nice presentations and taking their time and uh, learning and uh, it is unique and it is helping everybody and I just was sitting there and wishing when I was a student why didn't have I, I have a teacher like this 
we didn't have um, it, uh, the echo has come out uh, i think in uh, when we were there in 1978 79 uh, in uk it, and uh, not all the hospitals had it but uh, gradually gradually the peripheral hospitals got it so it is a long way they have come and uh, like uh, when we came back we had to know the echo we had to know the how to do the uh, i mean implantation of pacemakers and the peripheral NGO, congenital NGO, then the adult angiogram, all these things. Plus, uh, as you know, that I uh, first introduced the interventional cardiology in Bangladesh, all these. We, at that time, we didn't have any choice. We had to be uh, all rounder. But uh, Professor Nozulsum rightly said, well, this is not the time to be one person to be having uh, all rounder. But we didn't have any choice at that time because we didn't have that much of manpower. But you have now, you're so rich with the manpower now, the cardiologists, and we have to see who wants what. And I'm sure I'm going to give a chance and uh, train them in the right pathway, giving them the, um, the, uh, their dedication and intention and our guidance as the seniors. And um, I'm sure they will come up uh, like this, very successful, not only in Bangladesh, uh, all over the world, I'm sure about it. So this is, uh, the um, um, for me, the great opportunity to see how you have grown. And you have, uh, we uh, sometime, uh, we used to say, Professor Jalal, Professor um, uh, Nozrul, and uh, still, they are the uh, sort of, we say, Bodgas. Yeah? Now you are becoming in the Bodgas. We are on the below that. We are listening to you. We are learning what is the latest in the uh, cardiology, whether it's uh, non-invasive or invasive. And it's uh, amazing what you what people are doing. I, I know um, uh, about COVID with Jama is that sometime when we refer some um, to uh, surgical side after doing, after doing even um, uh, and you, uh, catheterization, and they say, well, send it to COVID with Jama. Let's have a the, uh, report and then see the report and the patient and the catheterization. So that is great. But that is, and we feel proud of you when you when the surgeons ask for you specially. You know, your, you, forerun Mara. your forerunners are there. Professor Nozrul is there, and uh, Professor Salam in the yeah, pediatric cardiology is there. We, we have got other uh, in non invasive cardiology, they are doing very well. Meshkat is also there. So, all of you have done in your field and struggled. We had to have not one, one specialist. We had to take uh, two or three or maybe sometimes four. But now is the time, really rightly, from the beginning, if we if you do that and you have got the, um, to guide you, there are a lot of people are there. And uh, the, uh, Professor, uh, yeah, Dr. Mohsin is there, Odu is there, and the others are also there. I'm sure that those who are um, deciding in the beginning that um, I, my interest there, nobody and I can force you to do anything. It is your own intention and dedication, and then you will be successful. Thank you so much uh, for uh, letting me say some words, and uh, I wish all of you have a good health and have a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for your kind words. Thank you. Uh, uh, Gopal is here. Okay, okay. Before a uh, few comments from the panelists, I to go for uh, one question. Dr. Azizul Haq Sohel, he also registered at Dhaka Medical College, dedicated in echocardiography. Dr. Aziz is a young fellow, plus dedicated on echocardiography. Aziz, put your question. Put your question, please. Yeah. Sir, Assalamualaikum, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm very fond of uh, Professor uh, Kubri Zaman, sir, regarding echocardiography. Our professor, Abdul Wadud Choudhury, sir, all time uh, ask us to follow Professor Kobiru Zaman, sir, as a, a dedicated echocardiographer. So I, I am a question. I have a question to, uh, some question to Kobiru Zaman, sir. Sir. Uh, yes, yes. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Sir, sir, um, sir all perimenomenous VHD is malaligned or not, sir? No, all perimenomenous BSD is not malaligned. It's an uh, alignment is a different concept. And yes. perimenomenous BSD is the uh, defect regarding the location of the BSD. 
actually malalignment happens whenever there is outlet defect okay. with deviation of the conal septum. This is one concept. Another concept, whenever there is defect in the AV canal part, that is inlet part of the uh, inlet part of the interventricular septum with deviation of the you know, either interventricular septum or the interventricular septum. This is the concept of the malalignment in two different locations. Whenever there is conjoint, you know, regarding the outlet septum and trabecular septum, outlet septum developed from the conal crest and the trabecular septum developed from the uh, primitive interventricular septum. These two septum uh, simultaneously grows and meet with each other. Whenever any, any deviation between the direction of these two septum, then there is malignant. This is one section. Another section is that whenever the, regarding the AV canal defect, it usually occurs due to endocardial cushion defect. The endocardial cushion gives rise to the atrioventricular part of the uh, interventricular septum. That it includes the primum part of the interventricular septum and inlet part of the interventricular septum. So whenever there is there is some problem in the in the primitive interventricular septum, then there occurs some of malalignment that creates an unbalanced ventricle overriding of the leaflets like so. So these are two different concepts in two different areas. So, Can I add something? Can I add something? It's like that. Problem. Whenever you have some problem in the conoceptal part, the outflow tract of the ventricles. If there's any problem in the septum disposition, if it's going up, uh, front or back, there will be malalignment. And very likely, as this concept also contributed in the uh, part of the, uh, the ventricular septum, there will be a gap. Or in between the tissue, the conal tissue. If there's any problem in there, that's likely to develop into uh, some malalignment if the conal septum is also involved. For malalignment, uh, Professor Tomitron has beautifully described. Okay, you have to have some problem in there as well. And also the problem in the ventricular septum is below the active ventricular valve level, a, a, sorry, a, a, a gate vessel valve level. So then the main problem is there. And if there is problem above, there is malalignment. Malalignment happens in two locations. The one were in outlet location and inlet location. Inlet location. So, you last Sir, uh, you, I have to Sir, sometimes uh, in during echocardiography, sir, the same BSD is different size in different views. Uh, that is, a perimeter BSD is parational lungs is view in uh, one size, then a, a, a short axis great vessel level is another size. Same BSD. Yes. Uh, how oh, can yeah. we put this, sir? Hey, you, you will mention the two orthogonal plane measurement. It's yes. not a circular structure. It is rather an uh, irregular circumscribed structure. Yes. It's a, like an irregular map. So you, can, you have to record the maximum diameter in one plane, and then you take a perpendicular to that plane, another measurement. That may be different. Yes. And that is expected. If you see the 10 by 10, then someone will say that you have you only, only, only 3D, 3D you can say it, uh, exactly, I think so. Yeah, actually, eco. this is the actually 3D echo have some limitation. Actually, whenever you do the congenital ego, the small child or adolescent child, they have heart rate, increased heart rate. Yeah. And 3D echo needs some frame limitation. rate is slow, slow. So I what is expected? This is not uh, till today. Till uh, today, there is not here. Yeah. So by today, go even if you have the increased heart rate, then you have to decrease the depth of the ears, and you have to shorten the width of the ears. Then can, you can have a very good image. Okay, but I think today, go if you have a two measurement in two orthogonal plan, that is acceptable. You are not. You are not giving you the absolute measurement. Your measurement should be near to the truth. That is enough. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
डिलेशन सब क्षेत्र देखा जाए तेजाल ग्रोथ है जेनेटिकेशनिकेशनेट फिजिकल कैरेक्टरिस्टिकर मध्य फेसिसर मध्य एगोला ख्याल कर और सिंपल ओवर एरिया जो है स्ट्राडलिंग ओवर रेडिंग ओवर रेडिंग स्ट्राडलिंग कारण क्योंकि एक मेल अलइनमेंट भिजी होते हाँ से सिनोमिक फेसिस ना थकते जेनेटिक मिट्टेशन ना थकते यूजुअलि दैट को ट्रांगल माल फर्मेशन जिसब क्षेत्र है टेक्नोलॉजी अफ पैलट डिओर टीजीए हाँ straightforward and very clear uh, just one uh, question that i would like to ask is do these congenital vsds uh, accompanied by any conduction defects uh, are the do they have any conduction problems or defects yeah covid sir the question yes yes there may be conduction defect but i have not i have not gone through elaborately to these uh, topics actually whenever there is <clears throat> involvement of the cracks Parts of the heart, you know, the, all the conducting tissue travel from aorta atrium to ventricle uh, below at the level of the cracks. So there may be a conduction defect. Okay, there you. may be conduction. Even after surgery, even after surgery, if the, there is chance Before of after. okay. Salam sir. Once again, okay. Salam sir, want to say something? Thank you. Uh, as shown partially by Dr. Kabir Jamal, that is the right ventricular surface of the interventricular septum. So there is a septomarginal band. Three things. Uh, one is uh, in um, uh, infundibular septum from above, which is dividing the pulmonary anteriorly and the outer posteriorly, and the uh, on the septal wall there is a septomarginal band having anterior limb and posterior limb, and above is. Uh, ventricular infundibular fold this triangular area and above that area there is a pos area so from the pos a uh, triangle the uh, at ventricular bundle that is every bundle start uh, and then it uh, bundle of which then divide at the crest of the ivs into um, that is the right and left bundle branch so uh, the extension of the vsd when it is posterior inlet vsd it is very uh, crucial for the surgeon to take the bite uh, they may in engulf the uh, bundle of fees uh, during their biting so the patient will develop conduction defect not only for the surgeon uh, uh, this is also important for the interventionist during implantation of the uh, vsd device they may also develop uh, heart block another is uh, the ventricular infundibular fold if any surgeon or rupture that area or uh, give incision to that area he will go outside of the heart That is the transverse sinus. You look at. So these are the very surgical point of view. The uh, in, in in view of surgical point, uh, importance. Covid one, Covid one should send that slide also. The yes. why it is important how to approach uh, by the uh, by the surgeon to avoid the conduction of injury. Thank you. But uh, at, uh, the outer okay, VSD there is the conduction no defect in VSD. That posterior muscular extension VSD. Have the maximum chance of 
conduction tissue injury either by surgery or by uh, intervention thank you sir this other comments on the conduction uh, 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 conduction defect actually uh, depends upon two things whether there is a coronal tissue involvement and this type of tissue involvement actually are related more related to conduction type defects and particularly with syndromes and again hydrogen acha i also want to talk about the acquired vsts the ventricular septal rupture that we have after mi and this can be ameliorated either by surgery or by uh, intervention and in our country also they have done one successful ventricular septal rupture uh, closed by device uh, i think for some moment has done that is it i do think uh, so and the traumatic vst we are not very accustomed to it but this happens particularly when driving if there is sudden stop is due to a, a accident car to car head on collision the pressure of the steering wheel on the chest that will lead to vst how come If, if the particle moment of impact, if the valves are closed, the outflow valves are closed, there is a great force generated within the heart, but but the valves are closed, the septal rupture can occur, and these ruptures are usually very sinusoidal, and these are very problematic. We have one uh, patient who had an accident in. Rasha, one Bangladeshi student, he was there. He had front heart failure. Came back to the country. We dry him up with IV infusion to a risky and geo fine. The IV shows that the tortuous sinusoidal phase, deep septal rupture, and the operation was done. And he later went back to Russia, married a girl there, and living still quite well. Uh, we have a public report of that. These are rare cases that can happen. Thank you. Traumatic PSTs and traumatic uh, during operation on conduction defects. Uh, Reality is that surgeon has to take very much care. And Salam sir has pointed out in which particular area the incision or intervention is going to likely to develop in conduction defect. Thank you. Actually, actually, actually wherever there is the PSD by incision of the ventricle. Then post PSD right, right ventricular conduction defect is very common. So to avoid this, many of the surgeon tries to the atrial approach. Is on the yeah. I could have the slides, but I have removed them to make it. <laughs> to make yeah, it it's for the fellows. It's not that important. It's mainly more important for the uh, surgeon. Yes, yes. Well. Thank, thank you, sir. Professor Mama Jaludin, sir, with us. Uh, sir, few comments regarding to us. I think is the last comment today. Okay. Was it Jalal sir? Please unmute sir. Okay. Sir, unmute fine sir. Unmute Colin sir. Sir, can you hold the bam dikhe? बाम दिखे नीचे बोले आचे देखो सर हैं वो जगह क्लिक करता हूँ सर सर बाम दिखे नीचे बाम दिखे नीचे सर पर क्लिक करता हूँ सर उसका क्लिक करता हूँ एम टाइ बट सिंगल सिंगल ये टच सर स्क्रीन के नीचे स्क्रीन के नीचे बाम दिखे उटेशन 69 और 
first of all, I took that uh, the eco machine to see something. Then I put the transducer in the machine, and I found that the heart is moving in a black and white echocardiography. And I saw the valves and the chambers of the heart only, moving heart and moving chamber. And I called my other fellows, other colleagues, to see the echocardiography. They were thinking it as magic, that how a torch like substance putting on the chest, the heart can be seen moving, the valves can be seen, and the chambers can be seen. At that time, we could only diagnose very little things, the mitral stenosis, mitral aortic stenosis, but the regurgitation could not be easily detected because without color flow, regurgitation cannot be seen. That was the beginning of echocardiography in Bangladesh. Now it is uh, 2020, about 38 years. Now, at that time, what was echocardiography? And today, what uh, in, in the last two lectures, Professor Kobiru Jaman, how he has uh, described how much development the echocardiography has is now at this moment. And also, uh, at that time, uh, Professor Nurul Islam came out, came in NICVD. Professor Abu Jafar was also in the beginning of uh, my my senior, very close, uh, very uh, uh, respected colleague, Professor Abu Jafar. Also, he was doing the ecopartic and Professor Nurul Islam came in NICVD, and he has also taken some. Uh, listen and the uh, training from Professor Abu Jabbar. And Professor Nuzul Islam also has raised the standard of echocardiography in uh, NICBD. He is doing many cases. I think he is the student uh, teacher of many of the uh, echocardiographer at this moment in Bangladesh. And he has today described the relation of uh, the clinical aspect as well as the uh, Echocardiographic relation of the VHD. And Professor Salam also described the VHD, the role of echocardiography in many ways, and the, especially the male alignment, Obiru Jaman, as well as Professor Salam was speaking. And Professor uh, uh, Mishkat was also saying about the relation of echocardiography and the clinical aspect of the VHD. And these are the things that have been well described. And Professor Kovuru Jaman described the VHD in such a way, in how many ways the VHD can be described. I think he has described everything. How many classifications are there? And what happens in the beginning of VHD and what happens afterwards if it is not intervened. So, uh, Kovuru Jaman has described the VHD in such a way that he can give the clue to the surgeons how to operate this patient, how to be successful after the operation. Thank you, Professor Kobri Jaman, for your nice deliberation and elaborate deliberation about the VHD. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks to Professor Mohsin and Professor uh, Abdullah Choudhury to this uh, arrange this session. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Every fellow should know the journey of echocardiography in Bangladesh. Thank you, sir. I think it is the archive, so everybody know after love, uh, love I think, past the coming years. So, thank, thank you, sir. Dr. Arif, 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 Any, I think, I think everything discussed. No chat question in the left in the chat box. Uh, almost all, uh, almost all the questions have been discussed, sir. Okay. So I think it can continue, sir. Thank you, thank you, Ari. Yes, sir. Madam, Madam. Yes, sir. 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 Y
Why did you ask for it? Meshka, sir. Please unmute. Unmute, unmute. मध्य Time to search out for any other lesion. The lesion has to be very well described before the surgery is being done. So, she just now, I mean, again, the door card is is map. That's how well we did it. Pare. I'm not madam. Covid is not going to be pare. Just now, who is it? Covid is not going to be pare. No, I am not. No, you are an expert. You are expert. You are not less than anybody else. No, no, no. I am not. No, no. 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 अपने शून्य से है जैसे यदि इफ देर इज एन इंटेलिजेंट फेलो दे विल पिक अप दिस क्वेश्चन एंड एक नाउ एंड अगेन हम तो बोलते पारे जैसे क्या नो यू आर राइट एब्सुलटली कारण ना मैंने आमी कार्डियो कैट मैडम अनिश्चय हम तो पेडिटेशन वाले भालो कॉर्ड पे डिट पे डिटी कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट निश्चित आलाप यूनिट मोर यूनिट मोर माय पॉइंट इज मोर्शिन के डॉक्टर मोर्शिन है मगर उधर चलो ये बोलते बजे अपना जो एक और ऊपर है ये रकम दो तीन जन की नहीं है वो कॉर्ड टाइम का डिवाइड करे पहले हमारे मन में भालो अवेलेबिलिट मुस्कुलर <laughs> So there, there are the, uh, big ones you see, you can repair, but the uh, the small ones you 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 can uh, sometimes you have to leave to close by itself. The surgeons prefers to know where they should go for it. But after uh, putting in the patient in the uh, table, you can look for the defect. But if you see it from the court, it is important. कैथेलाइजेशन So there is a compliment for you, Mr. Jamal. And now I might request to Mohsin and um, Dr. Odu as well to explain something uh, we, that they have a little bit of congenital cell congenital. I'm sure you will be able to do it. You are, you are going, under your good guidance. It will be done. Thank you. 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 Uh, please uh, uh, the conversation because That has come. Those particular subjects has come into this country at the same time. They were learning, and we were learning after them. Now our teachers' level has uh, come to certain level. Now we can try, as Madam has already said, to suggest 
we should not go for branching into specialties. Our young generation should go for that. They should be specialized on a particular topic. They should be a master, not like jack of all trades. They should be master of a particular context. That will be uh, doing a very good service to this country. And to that end, this lecture series and everything we do is for this motherland. Our Bangabandhu Shunar Bangla, the Shopno we see, we see. Our Bangladesh Bosna Pradhan Muti we see. Our Bangladesh Chara Chil Pioneer International Cardiologist, Pioneer Cardiologist. Our Chalal Sir, Shop Teacher, Dep Teacher. Our Bangladesh Pioneer Pediatric Cardiologist, Shop Pioneer. That means that our Bangladesh is very small. We are not that big. Our history is not that long. But we can go ahead. And the future lies with the youngsters. They should forge March 4. And we will be giving the blessings. We are becoming much older now. And our teachers have become much older. We need to have good service, good care of ourselves from you. You should become top news cardinalists of whom we can become really proud. I do think you will become like that. And with that end, we good. Uh, good day, afternoon to everybody, and wish all of you stay safe, stay active, and keep in touch. Thank, thank you, thank you, sir. As Officer Subhira Madam says, on 60 million people in Bangladesh, only less than 10 good eco categories in Bangladesh. I think it is, uh, we are trying to enrich our junior fellows. I think fellows are so much delighted and enlightened to this lecture. Also, Officer Jalal Sir Subhira Madam comments. Producer comments, also Sarway Ranjan Lasgopal and Chodji Bashkadam, sir. Thank you, sir, being with us. And Insect of Pharmaceuticals, being given the job for the last four months with us. Uh, thank you, Mizan, Shodov, and Adnan, others. Thank you to Pradifurman Shajol, Officer Abdul Wadi Chudhi, sir. Thank you, sir. Our next class on 30th August, Sunday, at the same time, 3.30 p.m., uh, our budding cardiologist, my junior, younger brother, Professor Abul Momen, he also, I think, a, a dedicated ecocardiographer. Uh, he will, will talk on ASD, another good ASD topic. Till then, goodbye. Allah Hafiz, stay safe and take care. Sir. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.